Morning. Morning. Welcome back. What's uh, what, Mom? We stop. Uh, well, first off, we got a guest here. Oh, I'm a guest. You're a guest. <laughs> and this is probably the podcast I'm absolutely the most nervous about so far. I'm excited. The uh, you know the one with Jenna, I was pretty confident I could hold my own and and uh, I control the roof over her head. <laughs> or so you think. <laughs> hmm. Okay, I get this now. <laughs> this one here, uh, she can dig pretty deep. So it's because I know a lot of deep stuff. You do know a lot of deep stuff, and uh, we're, we're going to try to avoid a lot of that over uh, over this. But anyways, we, we stopped counting episodes, Bob. We have no idea what episode this is, so we're not really that professional. But it's somewhere between fifteen and twenty. Yeah, around there. Okay. But we have roped my mother into uh, being on the podcast with us today. So I think it's because nobody else showed up that you had in mind. This is not. Uh, this is not completely true. We have a long <laughs> list of guests. Completely, but nobody was available this morning, so you had to pull me out of the store. No. <laughs> now, wait a minute here. We have a long list of people that would love to be on this podcast with us, but you're the only one that was in Derby this morning. Oh, God. Got it. Okay. I'm the available person. So you're the best available option we have. That is 100% correct. Okay. I'm excited to have you. Thank you, Jason. Of course. So uh, I don't even know where to start. I got a feeling I'm going to be on the defense mechanism this this whole time. Hey, you chose this. Let's just wrong. remember that. So uh, you just want to start off by telling them how fortunate you were to have one awesome kid, as in me. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next subject? <laughs> Keep going. We're, we're just going to skip over that. Well, all my kids are awesome. Everyone has their awesome well, abilities, I'm, I'm and like, you just have different abilities than the other two. So, I think I'm trying to be politically correct here. Yeah, this we're gonna have. You're gonna cut that shit out. Can we cuss on this thing? Lightly, but you know, if Grandma was here, your mother, we'd get right to the chase. Oh, well, Grandma's Grandma, and your mom's your mom. All right. So, all right. So we'll, we'll start off. We'll go back in time here a little bit, and uh, so. I don't think it was a huge surprise to anybody that I liked tinkering, tinkering with uh, mechanical things. No. Um, and I had a big interest in uh, the dirt and equipment and all Tearing things like crap that. apart. So one of the first memories that come to mind is, uh, you remember the Sesame Street? Big I Day? totally remember that because that was a huge Christmas present, which <laughs> I barely could afford, and you tore it all up. I did not tear it up. That was one of the okay. best learning you, experiences You ever. took it apart, but you were never able to get it back together. <laughs> well, That's, oh, truth comes okay. That is so, the now, truth. Hold on here. You back up and you tell your side of the story, and then I'll tell my side of the story. Hey, I was older. I remember. I remember very vividly. You were probably too. four. No, I was older than that. Well, then you should have been old enough to know better. Go back to Four and a half. Okay. So this Christmas present I get, it was a Sesame Street player. It had a cassette tape in it. Okay. I still to this day don't know how it worked. It had books to go <laughs> with a, the tapes, and, and it was a, a learning tool. Yeah, it, I kind of think I had one of these, too. So anyways, you put the, I take it apart. So you put the cassette <laughs> tape in it, yeah. and you flip through the pages, and it had like a color-coded something. Yeah. And you'd hit the button, and it would skip to a certain point in the it tape. It was to teach you. It was a teaching tool. Well, it, te it taught me all right. Not too well. You don't know how it works. Because <laughs> <laughs> he tore it apart. So anyways, I used this thing for probably about six months. And I got pretty bored with the books. I'm like, <laughs> whatever. So my mind, I'm intrigued. Like, whenever I push the yellow button, how the hell does it know to go to this spot? <laughs> There's only one way to find out, right? Did you find out? You take it apart. <laughs> Consult with the manufacturer. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, to this day, it's still a mystery to me. I did not know how it works. So the lesson you taught him was to always read the instruction manual. No, that's not. That didn't even come into play. So anyways, I, I took this thing completely apart. There was little gears and motors and all kinds of cool stuff in there. And I'm like, this is pretty cool. And I get it apart, and then I quickly realize that I am not qualified to put it back together. <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. So mom starts asking, like, where it's at, because she hasn't seen it in a while. 
And uh, so, oh, so you hit it? Yeah, well, of course. <laughs> yeah. So the, a smart four-year-old, right? He's, he's good at leaving details out. Yeah, so yeah. What's the next? If you can't get it back together, what's the next best thing you do? I lend you bed. No, you repurpose it. <laughs> yeah. What did you do with it? <laughs> so inquiring minds. I, I started oh, off. Yeah. The little uh, drive mechanism in it that makes the tape, like spins the cassette tape. I'm sure there's probably people listening to this podcast who have no idea what cassette tape is, but they'll have, to, they'll have to Google that. <laughs> oh, God. How old are we? <laughs> well, obviously, you're older than me. You're my mother. <laughs> Take two CDs and put masking tape in it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, I started off making, um, I started off, I was going to make a little, like, RC, like, little car. Mm. And that was boring. So then I, I tried to make it into a crane. Like I tried to make a crane boom out of, I think the center out of like some wrapping paper and put a string up to it. I was gonna winch stuff up. And long story short, I stripped the gears out of it. Oh, surprise, surprise. Yeah. So ultimately the Wait, motor- It didn't occur to you to use the tape inside of the, the cassette tape for anything? Well, the, Jason, that was, that, was, that was already gone. It was probably ate up, <laughs> you know, cause he couldn't get it so back together. So long story short, after a while, the only thing I had left that still worked was the motor. So I decided to make a fan to go above my bed to keep me cool at night. <laughs> See, I don't remember all the repurposing. And, uh, and, and, I would just remember being pretty pissed about yeah, you tearing it so out. So mother, uh, I, I, it, was, it was in the storage room down, no, it wasn't the storage room, it was the basement, it would have been there. Anyways, mom found the box of parts. Yeah, and uh, I do remember that. It got repurposed to a paddle. <laughs> She was not happy. That was a big gift. That was like the big gift. You know what? I didn't learn the lessons that toy was intended to teach me, but I learned a lot of lessons from that toy. About physics and paddles? And, yeah. (laughs) (sighs) That was the only thing you tore apart, but yeah, it wasn't. We got a... You didn't. You got better as you got older to at least get your crap back together. Well, I, that's what that thing taught me. Is if you're going to take it apart, you better have a plan to get her back together. <laughs> and from that, and, and I don't even know if mom even knows this, but from that day forward, like every RC car I got, <laughs> anything that had mechanical motors or anything about it, everything I had got taken apart and put back together. <laughs> everything. And judging by the truck that's sitting behind you, it still hasn't changed. <laughs> Just the toys got bigger. Yeah. The toys got bigger. <laughs> Yeah, and that's, uh, well, you remember my fascination with RC cars. Mm-hmm. That's probably why Gunner has that same deal. Yeah, but uh, I don't let Gunner have a screwdriver because I know what happens to him. <laughs> Poor Gunner. I know what I'm getting for Christmas. Yeah. That's screwed But I did. Man. <laughs> I mean, I enjoyed playing with them, but the funnest part for me was taking them apart, seeing the guts, see how they worked, yeah. modifying them if I could, mm-hmm. and then putting them back together. <laughs> Hoping they still worked. Well, well, I think everything time. after the Big Bird player at least worked for a period of time after I put it back together. As intended or? As I intended it to work as I put it back together. Sometimes I purposely repurposed. So I, I think mean, he just hoped they all worked when he got them back together. Was that, was the big, thing, that was the big if, thing. If mother ever asked, they were in presentable order. <laughs> yeah, they weren't hidden. <laughs> now, did you keep a list? Of oh. all the gifts that you gave him, God and said, oh, no, I need to see this one. No, okay. no. <laughs> it, when it was gone, it was gone. He never got another one. <laughs> so the, the next story that comes to mind, and I know you know this one really well. This is probably <laughs> one of my more famous stories. Is uh, <laughs> when you took my lawnmower apart and made a wood splitter. Oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> oh, all right. Keep going. I've got a lot of memories, Michael. Oh, that was that, that, that the, the, the lawnmower had reached its lifespan as a lawnmower. I mean, I but saved, it was still my lawnmower. But I saved it from scrap. Anyways, we're getting off subject okay. here, mother. Okay. So, so the next story, I was probably about maybe ten, somewhere in there. But I had uh, I had graduated from RC cars and and D batteries to small gas engines. Oh boy. And um, where this is going. The Where? golf cart. No, not the golf cart. Oh, God. Okay, I'll God, shut up. You you I know. I mean, <laughs> you asked for this. I didn't bring I it on. Let me get a pen and paper. I forgot, about the, <laughs> I forgot about the golf cart. So the one I got, this was, was this before or after the golf cart? We'll talk about the golf cart. Was it a weed whacker or a chainsaw? No, no, no. It's stuff like that. So oh, anyways, those would have been dangerous. Yeah, a leaf blower. <laughs> well, this, this kind of all plays into the same thing. 
is where we grew up at in Troy, my grandparents, which is where mom grew up at, had about 12 acres there. I, yeah, yeah probably. And, I don't and know. Whenever you were a kid, it was pasture. You guys had animals. We, we're, our house was, was the, the cow pasture. Right. And then, so behind grandma's house, which was basically in between where I grew up and grandma's house was a barn. And whenever grandma, whenever she was a kid, they had animals in it. Uh, my grandpa had a woodworking shop in it. They ran an oil well business out of there for a while. And then um, it, it just kind of became storage. But long story short, as a kid, uh, that's where mom and dad built a house in the pasture, the barns between me and my grandparents. And that was where I went to tinker. You know, there was all kinds of cool stuff there. I probably spent more time in that barn than I did mm-hmm. in the house. Yeah, grandpa taught you a lot. And uh, that's where uh, I got to kind of tinkering with, uh, you know, the, the little three and four and five horse Briggs and this stuff. And there was this old golf cart in there. And there's a picture of this somewhere on the Internet somewhere. I've, I've never seen another one like it. But it the folded, old red one? Yeah, it folded up. It was like made to go in the trunk of a car. And it had a three and a half horse Briggs. It a go-kart. Golf cart. No, it golf was cart. a golf cart. Frank so, got it from some. Where did you get Where'd your dad I get it I don't know, from? but I remember sitting down there forever, and it was just really cool. But it folded up, and it had a three and a half horse Briggs on it. It fit in the trunk of a car, and then it folded out and had a bench seat on it, and then it had a lever. You push the lever forward and backwards to steer it. No kidding. Yeah, it was the coolest thing ever. I, actually, parts of it are still down there because I repurposed it. Into, you know, here I go repurposing again. Uh, that old, uh, remember I tried to build a, a crane out of wood? Yes. Uh, so parts of it, I still got parts of it today. But anyways, I, I, this thing sat over in the corner forever, and I was just fascinated with it. And I'm like, this would be so cool to get going. Um, spoiler alert, it never had brakes, but anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's when you ran over your brother. No, that was the other golf go-kart I built out of wood. Uh, the real nice oak I thought board. it was the red one. No, it was you the real nice one. oak boards Dad had that he was so pissed that I saw up like a go. Oh, out of. that was yeah. Yeah, mom, you're getting you're getting okay. You're getting I know there's just too here. many. Okay, I'm shutting up. So, so anyways, I, this thing had this little three and a half horse Briggs motor on it, and I'm depend I'm determined. I'm probably I'm probably no older than ten, but this thing has, hasn't ran in twenty years. It's a far cry from safe, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna get this thing going, and we're gonna figure it out. And somehow. Dumb luck, miracle, I don't know what. I go flying through the front yard on this thing, and Mom comes out screaming. <laughs> she is not happy. <laughs> it's smoking. There's crap flying off of it. I can't stop. It don't turn. It only went left. It didn't turn right. And there was it was a danger time. trap, that's for sure. So then I got to think, I'm like, well, these little engines are way cooler than these RC cars. You know, you can do so much more with them. The, the, the things you can build is just through the roof. So somehow I stumbled upon, this is the story I'm trying to get to. I stu- <laughs> we got sidetracked. I okay. I've yeah. stumbled upon this little 1919 Briggs and Stratton washing machine motor. And I had this, this thing I was, gonna, I was going to, uh, you know where I'm going with this yet? No. So uh, Do I, I know this one? Oh, you know this story. It'll come to you here in a minute. So... I was going to try to restore it, get it working, and fix it up, and make it like a little showpiece. I thought it'd be cool to have a little showpiece. Right. Well, I had, an, I had an 8 o'clock curfew. I could only stay in the barn until 8 o'clock. Well, I still had two, three good hours in me. I heard this story. So <laughs> I box this thing up and hide it in my closet. So after Mom puts me to bed, I go in there and start working on it. Well, I should have drained the gas out of it. <laughs> you remember that? No. No? You don't remember this? It's, so anyways, I come home from school Was this one, when you were downstairs or Oh, no, I was upstairs. upstairs in Andy's old room. So I come home one day, and she is absolutely livid because she found this engine in my closet, and there's gas spilled all over the carpet. God, Michael, maybe I forget some things on purpose. I was say, there might be some stories you try to forget. Yeah, no kidding. Gas on a carpet might be one of them because somebody could light a match. Is that why I still smoked and so I could burn the house down? <laughs> I don't remember if you did or not, but... Uh, no, I think that you were older than I didn't. But, yeah, the uh, I can't believe you don't remember that. She was... That's probably, like, the maddest I remember her being is I had this engine in my closet. I can't believe you're trying to get her to remember it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Why do you want that memory to come back up? So, I go from there, and uh, so after I got this old golf cart going, I'm like, what's the next best thing? It's a go-kart, right? Oh, yeah. And nothing against my parents, but... They weren't going to buy me a go-kart. It just wasn't going to happen. I wonder why. <laughs> so I, I wonder why. <clears throat> so it was very simple. Uh, the solution to this was very simple. If I wanted a go-kart, I'm going to have to build me a go-kart. Okay. <laughs> you know, easy as that. So I do remember this story because <laughs> your dad was so damn mad at you. So, uh, Dad, we have uh, on the Simon farm, he had, they had some lumber cut or something. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, they had these oak, <coughs> which real was nice, the best wood at that point in yeah, time. Yeah, back in the, in the day. This, yeah, so they had these real nice oak boards. They were probably 12 inches wide, probably two inches thick, and 12 feet long. Beautiful oak boards. And we got yeah. pictures of this thing. This Did thing you was, at least measure twice and cut once? Uh, no, it was, it, no, it wasn't precise. Let me tell you, it was I'm pretty rough. You guys, if you ever seen pictures of this go kart, this thing was an engineering beauty. Oh yes. <laughs> you have to. I don't know how. It was. <clears throat> it was unique, Michael. Let's just say that. I rode the crap out of this thing. So let me describe this. Let me describe this go kart. Ferrari stole the patent. But hold on. It was so heavy because of all the oak wood. It wouldn't hardly get you around because you just. You well, used... I had solutions for this. Yes. Then I we had... had to keep upping. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you were allowed to keep it. Well, who wanted it? <laughs> but Michael. Oh, you know? I, was the, I, was, I was the talk of the town. I mean, everybody was jealous of this thing. I'm sure you were the talk of the town more than once. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways. We don't know if it was jealousy or not. First yeah. off, to show you how much I love my brother, I made sure it was a two-seater so he could ride with me and share in the danger. I didn't want to leave him out. Now, you're the middle brother, right? No. I'm the eldest. You're oldest. the oldest. Yeah. Okay. Greg was smart enough not well, to ride with him. Was Andy smart. was too young to know the difference. He just thought Michael was cool, so he's like, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> So let me paint this picture for you. So I got two boards laying flat. This thing was probably 10 feet long. Okay. <laughs> so you made a, a limousine go yeah. Do you still have, are we, I'm we sure see, we, we do. Still got, I, actually, I think there's a picture of it hanging on the wall in the house. Um, so I took the front axle out of an old Gibson lawnmower, I believe, and the steering column off of it and screwed it down to the deck. I built a seat out of wood. Now here's where the beauty comes in. Listen to this. Doesn't I found it sound a, beautiful? I found a four-speed. <laughs> I found a four-speed transmission out of a Murray lawnmower. Oh God! <laughs> so I had the engine and the transmission like mounted across the back. Yeah. And then I could reach around back, and I had a hand clutch. I kick that sucker in gear, just a friction hand clutch. So <laughs> This isn't dangerous at all. Yeah, so See, I don't know anything so about that reach stuff. Back I just air. know that they shouldn't have been on you it. You could reach back there and grab a grab a gear or two. I started off with a hand throttle, but I did get upgraded to a foot throttle. But I had reverse. So all the kids around town are like, oh, race you. I'm like, fine, let's go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it rode like a dream because then boards were so stretched out and you were sitting right in the middle. It almost had like shock absorbers in it. It was as rough as hell. How but, could you say that? But there was one downfall. It had no brakes. And uh, me and Andy jumped a ditch one time, and somehow he fell out, and I ran over him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, he was probably only four. So mom's like, mom's livid. She's like, you got to put seatbelts on that thing. Rah, rah, rah. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll find a solution. I'll put seatbelts on it. So I cut two slits in the back of the seat, and I went upstairs and got dad's leather belt. I didn't know it was his sentimental favorite leather belt that I was using for seatbelts. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That, I put yeah. seatbelts on. So me and Andy, we drove that thing around for probably two or three summers until it finally. Actually, if I remember right, Grandpa was so impressed with this thing, he actually bought me a brand new five horse big and strap motor to put on it. Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that either. <laughs> I do have selective memory, don't I? Uh, probably for the better i remember when i got pissed i remember when your dad got pissed and he was pissed over the wood but the, but the, the, the i know they were pissed but they were so impressed they couldn't be mad <laughs> well that's true that's true because it was pretty much a and i knew how big a trouble i was in if this did not work out like my only hope is this thing roll <laughs> or he's gonna end up with 10 foot boards instead of 12 and i don't know what happened <laughs> now the question is did you learn a lesson of how they acted for when gunner starts doing this i forget all that yeah there you go paybacks are hell so yeah it uh that thing man um i still got bits and pieces of it but um eventually i end up well, you probably upgraded to something else, and that's you probably outgrew yeah, that. Up, that's the way that. it always goes. I ended, up, I ended up. Well, then I learned how to weld. Um, and then metal became a thing. Well, my dad wouldn't. Uh, my dad wouldn't teach me how to weld, so I just started. I don't even know if Dad knew how to weld. <clears throat> he knew how to weld enough to show me how the basics of it. So oh, you know, I'm pretty savvy. So I was like begging Dad forever to teach me how to weld, and I wasn't ready, and it was too dangerous. A very good <laughs> and uh, <laughs> all this stuff. Well, come to find out. Our neighbor is a retired bull maker. Yeah. So I made friends with him, Mr. Olivia. <laughs> so That's right. I, uh, and I he like, knew how to weld. He knew how to weld. And I'm like, well, hell with dad. This guy, he's better yet. So I 
rope the neighbor into teaching me how to weld. Then once, now in dad's defense, once I like, he knew there was no not teaching me how to weld, he did jump in and yeah. teach me a few things about weld, mostly like not kill yourself stuff. Yeah. But honestly, fortunately, I was pretty lucky to have Mr. Olivia because yeah. he was way better at it anyways. You know, dad, dad. He knew the fine tuning. Yeah, right. dad knew farm welding. This guy was a, a welder by right. trade. Right. So then I built my first go-kart out of steel, and unfortunately I had to rub a lot of parts off the wooden one to make the steel one work. But it was cool. I took a drive shaft out of an old truck, and that was my front axle, and I welded um, spindles to the U-joints. Okay. And that's what I used to turn the front, and I had a rack and pinion steering on it. You should have been an engineer. <laughs> and uh, I had to go to an eight-horse motor on that one because it was ridiculously heavy. I, I have a tendency Heavier to Heavier than the oak woodwood? Yeah, it was, actually. <laughs> That's one thing your dad always used to make fun of. He's like, he didn't realize using that oak wood, how heavy it was. You don't realize it was the only option I had. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I mean, that was... Yeah, we that's did. That's you're still here. Yeah. That, that yeah. Was, uh, but that one, that was a huge upgrade on that go-kart. It's the first go-kart I ever had with brakes. Oh. Yeah. Look at you, I made some on. little paddles that went down on the back wheels, you know. and They worked until you hit the first puddle. No, they worked. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They worked really good until they got wet. And then, yeah, you're on your own from there. But uh, I was dead against, against centrifugal clutches, so this one still had a foot pedal on it, too. Mm-hmm. But it was spring. You'd let off the clutch, and the spring would pull the belt tight, and you'd take off. Nice. And uh, you could do a lot of cool stuff with a direct drive go-kart that, mm-hmm. you know, your buddies couldn't do with the other ones. But All foreign to me. I have no idea. I was, I mean, this is well before I ever had my driver's license, so I was probably 11 or 12 at the oldest. I, yeah, well, that barn was your entertainment. Yeah. I mean, that's what you did. I, I couldn't tell you how many things I caught on fire down there and blew up and near misses. And Could you tell us how many things he caught on fire? <laughs> no, I probably don't know how many things he caught on fire. Uh, you're better. exactly right. You're, yeah, think if, about all the awesome lessons I learned down there. Yeah, did before I still, you get to that, tell me I about st- the lawnmower. <laughs> tell me about what? The lawnmower. Oh, no, I just had a John Deere lawnmower. I love John Deere lawnmowers. That's what I used to cut the grass, and it sat there in the barn. And we needed a log splitter, so let's take out the motor of that, and let's build us a log splitter. And that's what we did. Until, uh, yeah. Now, was the log splitter worth it in comparison to the lawnmower? Let me add into this factor that this lawnmower was a John Deere 110. And if anybody knows anything about John Deere, this is like maybe a 500 hour lawnmower at the most. This thing had 1,300 hours on it. But it okay. was my lawnmower. She had got I her liked it. full use out of it times three, and it was in storage <laughs> because it was a dinosaur. But it was still my lawnmower. <laughs> And it was your log splitter. I just reshaped it. But I couldn't reuse the log splitter. I didn't even do that. Now, in my defense, Dad told me to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll blame it on the dead guy. <laughs> He's not even here to take up for himself. We were cutting firewood, and he said, when he, remember, we used to always bear, uh, borrow, um, oh, what's Lynn's ex-husband? Um Jim's? Jim. We used, well, I'm pretty sure it was Jim's log splitter we used to always borrow when we cut firewood. We got some farm cut firewood and he'd bring that log splitter down and we'd use it. Cause it so you're saying your dad gave you permission? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh. Take it up with him. Mm. Jim Holland. That was his name. Yeah, I know. Or Jim. Holler. Yeah. Holland. So we, we would go, we'd stockpile firewood at the house and then dad would borrow this log splitter from a buddy and we'd split it all. And I made a comment to dad or something. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the way that went down. Dad's not here to defend himself, obviously. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. But he's like, we should build a log splitter. I'm like, well, we can probably do it with parts out of that old lawnmower. And I don't know if he said yes or no, but he didn't. I don't, think he, I don't know if he said yes, but I'm pretty sure he didn't say no. So I took that as a yes. <laughs> hmm. So your memory's getting a little selective here, too. Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. There See you something go. something that might run in the family. <laughs> But uh, good news, the log splitter was a success. It worked. Yeah. It worked good. And we did go through a lot of wood, but it was still my lawnmower. <laughs> what were you so damn attached to that lawnmower for? There's nothing special. Because you don't get when you buy these big items when you just are, you're young and you're starting out. That was a big item to buy, just like the Sesame Street was. You know, it wasn't like we were made of money. So... I like that. Those might have been sentimental to me, but those were my big first items. That was my first new lawnmower I ever had. I think, I don't know how we want to cover this, Mom, but I think it's something important to point out 
and I understand it a lot more now that I'm older than what I did whenever I was younger, but uh, your parents, my grandparents, by the time I come around, the time I can start remembering, Grandpa was a very successful businessman. Yes, but you would have never known that. You, no, no, no. I mean, he, he walked up to you, you, you had no idea. But the people in the know in the community knew that, you know, oh, I'm not going to say Grandpa was wealthy, but he was a successful businessman. He was very successful. Um, but he worked his butt off. He did. And, and we actually talked about that in the last podcast a little bit. Mm-hmm. But our immediate family pod of you, Dad, and, and my two brothers, we were by no means poor, but we were not in the same we weren't in the same tax brackets. <laughs> There's no way. Which I think goes back to your comment of buying an $1,100 lawnmower brand new in 1985 would be the equivalent of me buying a, a fifty or $60,000. Yeah, it was today. huge. It was big. It was, those are, those are purchase items that you only hope to, you know, like. You save up for it. Yeah, like our, you know, bedroom furniture. Now people just, you know, go anywhere and buy it. But that was where big items that's why i still have it or you have it now and i told jenna she no you have my bedroom furniture we do (laughs) oh my gosh (laughs) he doesn't even know what he's got i think that might have got repurposed mother (laughs) no no it did not jenna's jenna knows what to do with that it comes right back to me if she doesn't want it anymore uh so anyways yeah i um uh yeah i mean well yeah you're right we we had everything we needed we, but you know, you just, you build on it. We, but yeah, we were proud of our first purchases, those big purchases, cause mm-hmm. you saved up for them. You know, the, you know, ironically, the first like big purchase I remember us getting as kids, it was like, oh, we've, 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 we've made it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I can, what was that? I can run as the, it, you're going to laugh your butt off whenever I say what this is. Like we can, you know, we can compete with the, with the big dogs now. And it was the uh, second minivan we got. <laughs> the luxury one the that luxury we, one. Yeah, that we, we got, got we got the le minivan yeah because we got yeah. the le grand minivan oh, like yeah. oh yeah we were traveling in style well it was the what did you call it it was a lemon it was put back in on the lemon thing yeah it was turned in on the lemon law so we were able to afford it <laughs> yeah but it really did, wasn't a lemon it was just right the person that had it before it was didn't the lemon. Like, right. yeah <laughs> But yeah, we, was that was huge. We kept that thing forever. It that was, thing was like, I don't know. It was, I think it was a 96 or 97 model. We probably got it in, uh, no, it was probably. It was, it was, they turned it in like, with, it was still pretty new. Yeah, like it had less than 20,000 miles on it and it had all the bells and whistles, all the new stuff. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what was it? It was a it Chrysler was, Grand Caravan LE. My mom had a 99 it Chrysler was the, Grand Voyager, I think. Yeah, the Voyager was the Plymouth model of it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. But it was, the, yeah. you know, the first one was real boxy, and the second one kind of had the curved front end. Yeah, it actually yep, looked, that's what we had. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. It was really yeah. nice. Now, did you have the push-button open door thing? No, that one didn't have that. Yeah, ours didn't either. But I <laughs> oh, didn't oh, you mean like the combination on the outside? No, there was a button inside the car. It'd be like Jenna's uh, yeah. van. Yeah. You hit the button and the back doors open. Oh, no, no, no. That was way before you had to go do it manually. Yeah, see, that cars were manual, and we only had one. This, yeah. This was still before that they had yep. doors yeah, on this the was, side. Yeah, this, this one only had the one, too. Right, it had right. The, it had the rear AC control. I can yeah, control my yeah. own AC. And I do remember being excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to take the middle bench out when we traveled, and yep. you guys would just sleep there. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> that right. was before well. We had still had the whole bench back bench so they could buckle up when we were in town. Yeah, but. and then when we got on the highway we used to travel down to Florida to, to see my grandparents. Yeah, that's where we'd and, go is on spring break. Yeah. Remember that one time we left in the middle Yeah. And, Troy and Andy fell asleep and didn't wake up till we got to Florida. <laughs> I mean, because we would travel at night because yeah, the, right. the boys drove us nuts. All right, so so growing up, <clears throat> growing up as kids, I've I've talked about this sometimes. Everybody always asks how come I'm self-employed, and one of the reasons I give is is basically on mom's side of the family, everybody's self-employed. Pretty much, I think we like to be our own bosses. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, to give examples, uh, mom growing up was a hairdresser. Yeah. Um, had her own beauty salon. Uh, my grandpa had a successful insurance business. Uh, my uncle Rick, your brother, worked for Grandpa and now has taken over the insurance business. Mm-hmm. Mostly, I think. And, well, do we really know what Rick does? <laughs> Rick's actually getting ready to retire. He Is has he? somebody, um, yeah, okay. part of his business. Um, so, uh, you know, the, 
Rick and Grandpa were in the insurance business. Mom's got a sister, Lisa, and her and her husband were in uh, real estate development, I guess is the simplest mm-hmm. way to put that. <clears throat> so, uh, and then Dad worked, Dad was an equipment operator. Mm-hmm. He worked in the, uh, pretty much. Mostly the, coal mines. Mostly coal mines his whole life. And uh, you can tell these stories better than me, but uh, whenever Dad was working in the coal mines in the late 80s, early 90s, that wasn't a real glamorous job or an easy job to get. Oh, it was feast or famine. You either worked your butt off and you were working six, seven days a week, or you were laid off. I mean, that's just the way it went back in the 80s. But you could go get a job. That was when they were smaller coal mines. Now they're all huge. But he, there was a group of people, mostly from out here in Derby and, and Leopold, you know, Gilliams. And yeah. whenever he would leave one job, he'd just take his whole crew and he'd go to another job. And so... <laughs> What was it that one year? I think he had six different places he worked for in one year. Same people, but different companies. Right. You know, so. Yeah, you know, these these mines they would uh, they would pop up and they would either mm-hmm. run out of mineral rights or they'd run out of permitting or they'd run out of coal. Mm-hmm. So they'd go in and, and just go like heck until the timer ran out, and then like that whole group would travel to. And a lot of times they travel, like it'd be the same group of people, but maybe a totally different company. Right. Yeah, and they do the same thing there. And, mm-hmm. you know, I guess um, towards the end there, that was the longest dad ever stayed in one spot, wasn't it? He worked for Kessel. It was. It was. Longest time we ever had the same job and from the same was, paycheck. Uh, was he there six, seven Six years. years. Six years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I remember some of that growing up that mostly it was his schedule because we used to do a lot of camping. Well, when he worked for Kester, he it was all nights. Right. So he would come home you I guys will go to school question, but, but did he never have the opportunity to get on days after being there for six years or did he not want to no he didn't have the opportunity really it was a that was one of the bigger companies he ever worked for right so um yeah we had insurance and 401k it was exciting <laughs> we didn't have that for many other jobs you know but right. um no i don't think he ever had the opportunity he would have taken it if he did but no no, so, I mean, yeah, that was what I still have the notebooks because we used to communicate with notes, you know, mm-hmm. like we'd write Frank something like, don't forget to do this or this or this. And then he'd write back right. all on the same page. So I still got some of those notebooks. I, you know, I remember dad job hopping. I remember him working for Tony Lanham and, and Jack Hesley and uh, Bud Bruce. Well, and- he was a great heavy equipment operator yeah. i mean everybody but the jobs were just that was way back this goes way back when when they were trying to get rid of coal you know mm-hmm. 20 years ago and so Bunch of everything would be clean air and then the coal mines would be done and then somebody else get in the office and we're back on again which is right. crazy here we are yeah 30 years it's the later same thing going same, on still doing it right same, same and so those poor people are out of jobs again now yeah you know, so it's, yeah, exactly. History repeating itself. Uh, all right. So uh, we've, we've covered all this, and I still haven't made it to high school yet. Oh, God. <laughs> Are we going to get to the truck? Because I want to hear her side of the truck. So which truck's this one? The one that you fixed up and she wouldn't let you drive. Oh, the old brown truck? Oh, brown? Remember the old brown oh, truck? Who could forget old brown? Yeah. Everybody drove old brown. The uh, I was telling the story on the last podcast that uh, one of the best lessons that I was pissed at about at the time but how I spent all that time fixing that truck up and I was going to start driving it to school I got my driver's license I went out to get in the truck and I was like you're riding the bus that ain't your truck and that's when I had to get a job and I had bought that damn white truck remember that yep I do and then you know what really peeved me off about that whole deal his dad started driving the brown truck and he wrecked the damn thing Remember how he caved the old passenger door in? Yeah, but and who then, cared? It was old yeah. brown. No, it I wasn't mean. old brown. I put my heart and soul into that truck to fix it up. Do you remember when he sold it <clears throat> and then we saw it because we thought it just died somewhere? Yeah, so dad wrecks it. I mean, this thing wasn't in great shape to start with. <laughs> oh, no, it was just this old, stupid <clears throat> truck. I had a lot of passion for this truck. I'm going to have another one of these days. <clears throat> so I get it fixed up to where it's road, roadworthy and it's a pretty clean, straight truck to be an old oil truck. Dad goes to haul a full wheeler to the farm, runs the full wheeler in the back, knocks the back window out of it, and then he pulls up and hits the fence post and caves the passenger door, and he's like, it's junk sale. I'm like, no! <laughs> they make parts for this. So he's like, it's scrap. So then, like, he sells it, and it was probably two or three years later, we see this damn thing in a gas station, and the guy's still driving it. I was livid. 
That was pretty funny. No, it was not funny. I was pissed. No, we thought it was in some little junkyard somewhere that was still going. So there's more to this story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's more to this story, and she knows what it is, whether she wants to admit it or that not. That could be selective memory coming on again. Yeah. I don't know. So, uh, of course, I end up getting a job, and I started saving money. And actually, Dad found that white truck for me. It was a guy he worked with at one of the coal mines, had this truck. And it was actually a pretty good truck. Mm-hmm. So It was a nice-looking truck. After all this, guess what they decide to give me for Christmas the next year? The brown truck? Oh, piece of shit. Dodge truck in the backyard didn't run. That little white one that Dad used to drive back and forth to work? That Datsun? Yes. It was, which was or the, the Nissan. It no, was a Nissan. No, it was a white Dodge Datsun. And it was the one, it used to be an old wall truck too. And the old wall was closed down. Dad took his truck and started driving it back and forth to work. Well, I couldn't figure out why it's parked in the backyard. Well, come to find out, it's flat ass wore out. <laughs> But we figured you could fix it like you did everything else, probably. It used, it used more damn oil than it did gas. Did you repurpose it? I think I did get it running and maybe drove it to school a few times. But uh, I, I once oh, I, I do kind of remember. Oh that yes, thing. we do kind of remember this thing now. But I don't remember. Remember it had the uh, pipe rack on it that had the steel um, uh, ball bearings welded on top. Did it of have it? some green on it? No, no, it was, it was white with white. a strap. It looked a lot like that Nissan truck. I yeah, had. yeah, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, it was my Christmas present one year. Once I, about three trips to town, I got rid of all the mosquitoes in three counties, and we decided we probably just need to get rid of it. Oh, you had it. There was a lot of, yeah, a lot of vehicles going through that yard. But they were all good learning experiences. So. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, my first official vehicle I owned uh, was the, it was a 91 three-quarter ton Chevy truck. That. The white one. Yeah, yeah. The one you had in high school. Yep. So, all, right, all this, what we've been talking for half an hour and we're just out yeah. of high school? Wow. How far we got to go? Uh, well, we got to get the present <laughs> day at some point. <laughs> well, you so, better speed it up. I so got to get back out of the store. No, I'm going I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm to toot my own horn here for a little bit. Really? Yeah. You toot your own horn? That yeah. would surprise me. That's usually when I start lowering his volume. Yeah, yeah. He's so modest. Remember, when I came to high school, I was an exceptionally good kid. You really were. Say that, most, in, the, say that in the microphone. Most of the time, can he was can not a... Can you hear her, Jason? Can you hear, hear her? Okay. He was what not was a, I? You were not a partier. You were not any of that. You were always down at the barn, just a dirty kid. That's what you were. Coming home oily or muddy or gassy. <laughs> I meant gasoline smell. Probably gassy, too. Yeah. 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 So by the time I got to high school, I, uh, well, I was working like three jobs. Do you know what I remember about, well, I should, probably shouldn't say that. No, go ahead. Well, because you, you you never did give a poo about school. I mean, the mechanical thing and the, what's the, what was the class you took? Building trades. Building trades. So, needless to say, you were never on the honor row. He just got by. He was good. He didn't, that's not what was his passion. So, when the school, remember when the school called me? and asked me to come to the Honor Society uh, banquet. Oh, she thought they had their own name. And I did. I said, so, <laughs> I said, for who? And they're like, for Michael. And I'm like, Michael Simon, my Michael Simon. <laughs> you know, I'm like, so he's really not Honor Roll material here. I don't know what you're thinking about. Like she's trying to talk him out of it, like trying to convince him they well, made a mistake. Well, I just wanted to, I didn't want to go and be embarrassed. Like, what the hell are y'all oh, doing no, here? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they gave out awards for that. So anyway, I've got a picture with his name on the marquee that we you were. We actually found that the other day. Yeah. Uh, so we were in the right place, just didn't understand it at the time. <laughs> All right, I'm done. So I mean, this kind of plays into where I'm going here a little bit, but uh, I mean, everybody knows that uh, English and spelling was never my thing. Correct. Still isn't. <laughs> Still isn't. Still isn't. Hey, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm good with it now. It's whatever. Take it or leave it. Thank God, I probably for autocorrect for you. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Well, they need to work on autocorrect because they don't always auto get it right. Well. <laughs> but uh, I got, I, I, I made it through. I made it through high school. And you only did got, good. You only did fine. One, only got one D. A lot of B's and C's, but only got one. Yeah, I mean, I it, and you didn't even apply yourself in those areas. No, I had zero. I mean, uh, I had zero interest in that school. That you just needed to get by. English. 
that principal pissed me off. I had no reason to be there. Uh, like I said, you just you you excelled where you needed to excel. But uh, so we we talked about this a lot in the podcast about how whenever I was graduating from high school, there was a big big push to go to college. Well, that yeah, that I just think it's now starting to turn the tide to do stuff what you did because we need yeah. these kind of workers. So why in the hell did you make me go to college? I didn't make you go. You went to Diesel Mechanic College, don't you? Use yeah, that but right I wanted now? to go straight to work, and you wouldn't let me. Well, because I was just a horrible mom. No, oh, you're sidestepping <laughs> the question, <laughs> which is where you get the talent to questions. No, you. It served your purpose. You did it. I didn't make you go. Well, let me rephrase this. You maybe didn't make me go. I encourage you. But you, you to didn't go. you didn't leave a whole lot of other options on the table. Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe I just wanted you out of the house for a while, you know? Now why would you ever want that? I know. Maybe I just thought a clean house for a while, but it really didn't work that way. You just went up there, did your stuff, and brought there. all your crap back no, home. I, actually, what happened is I went to college, I made friends, and then I brought them back. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> she wanted you gone because you were gassy. Yeah. <laughs> you never knew who was going to be sleeping down in the basement. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, you know, growing, going through high school, I didn't really, like, get into – I didn't really have time to, like, get into building hot rods or racing go-karts or i was still tinkling tinkering on some mechanical stuff building some things here and there but you just like the building aspect of it yeah i always putting enjoyed stuff together it wasn't out going out and racing or whatever you know uh, two-thirds of the fun for me is and even to this day on this truck it's not the finished product it's the challenge of making it all work yeah you know i don't have an engineering degree nor do i ever want an engineering degree but um, you basically are an engineer just without the degree. Yeah. Well, a true engineer would argue you to your death on that because if you don't have a degree, you're not an engineer. Well, they don't know who they're messing but with. But you know the crazy part is <laughs> they have no idea how many things I have fixed for our engineers, and that's on the big, big corporate world scale of stuff. You know right. what I mean? It's it goes back to experience and knowledge and mm-hmm. gain that however you want. You know what I mean? So, uh, but. Um, I, I will open this door for you, and you can choose to go down it or not. Okay. And then we're going to go on to something else. Okay. So, I had a few girlfriends in high school. You liked them all, didn't you? For the most part. <laughs> There's only one. I Yeah, you go on down. Go. What? I don't, I'm not going to probably say some of that stuff. I loved your first one. Jennifer was... I felt when you guys broke up, she broke up with me too. It was awful. <laughs> it was the first girl I had around. It was awesome having three boys, you know, then finally getting a girl. We used to go line dancing together. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I mean, she was my friend. I really loved her. Yeah. But no. Unfortunately, Jen- Jennifer's no longer with us either. She uh, also got killed in She, accident. yeah, died right after your. Right after dad. Dad, yeah. Yeah, right after dad. That's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah, we won't go down that road. But. So, um, so after Jennifer, there was uh, Jennifer was that was my first serious relationship. We dated yes. for almost oh, two years. Yeah, you guys were together for a while. Yeah, about a year and a half. We got we got together between my sophomore and junior year, and we broke up uh, between our junior and senior year. So I guess about a year, maybe a little more. And, yeah. Somewhere. In there. And, I, and I'm still friends with their family today. Oh, whatever, yeah. Whatever. Sweet people. Uh, good, yeah. Good people. So then there was a few other ones in between there. The rebound girl. <laughs> That's what I like to call her. Sounds like a favorite. <laughs> no, she was no favorite. Just tolerated and just kept hoping that was going to pass pretty quick. <laughs> uh, what about the second rebound one? We talked about the Kentucky girl? No, the one after that. Oh, the one that played the piano? No, not that one either. Oh, God. Uh, the one that's also here from Derby. Amber. Oh, God. <laughs> Forgot all about her. She must not have been that bad then, right? No, she wasn't. She was sweet. She was sweet. I forgot about her. Yeah. That's when we were putting our roof on. I knew you guys were... She was working with Bernie. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's not how I met her, though. No, it's how I met her. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how you met her, but 
Well, you probably met her because you were with Bernie, too. No, actually, I met her at the Bowen Alley. Oh, okay. The Bowen Alley. Okay. No, uh, she was sweet. I liked her. So, well, this is where I'm going with all this. It's a, it's a loaded loaded street we're going down. Mm-hmm. We usually do. Um, so, um, first impressions of Jenna. Oh, I love Jenna. No, now, Mom, Jenna's not going to listen to this podcast, and she'll ever never know what you're going to well, say. Well, she might, because Jenna listens to the podcast. Shut up, Jason. I'm trying to get the good stuff here. No, I, I didn't have a problem with Jenna. I met her over at camp and on the boat. You remember the first time you met her? Because I don't. I think I met her before you two started dating, because that's when I was running with Phyllis on the boat, mm, and yeah, she was probably out there with Ryan and Katie. Wasn't there a picture shown of you? Yeah, so the, 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 I think Jenna told this story on, yeah. on her podcast, but uh, Phyllis, Mom's friends, uh-huh. this, this shows you how pitiful my love life was back then, Mom's friends was trying to set me up. Yeah, that's the story I was thinking Mostly about. because they knew I was a good catch, but that's a whole nother story. Okay. <laughs> I heard the story a little differently, but... <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to comment. <laughs> anyways, Mom had this picture of me hanging on her little beauty station down there, and Phyllis is like, here he is, look at him. And Jenna remembers seeing that picture and thinking, there ain't no way in hell I'm going to date that guy. <laughs> that could have been Jenna's opinion. I don't know. I just remember us so being you, over at camp. Thanks to you, you about ruined it before it ever got started. Because I had your picture? Because you had my picture. Not my best picture, apparently. Well, I don't think Jenna liked the way you did your hair. And I, well, who's my hairdresser, mother? No, no. Who was my hairdresser, mother? I cut your who hair. Who was my hairdresser, you mother? You style your hair. No, That's what who was she didn't my like. hairdresser, mother? That's not how I style it. That's how you styled it. Are you, are you, you still, still take appointments? Because I didn't <laughs> <laughs> I used to always threaten to get a shirt that says my mother does my hair, and I realized that was probably not in my best interest. <laughs> no. That is when I always said I was going to do that. Michael always cut his hair right before picture time. You know, yeah. the, right before the school picture. So he'd always have this big chunk out of his head. Now, And I, I always do. said, I'm going to get a t-shirt that says, I do my own hair, not my mom. Because <laughs> it would be like, they're thinking, does she cut like that? Now, I remember one very detailed, horrifying incident from my childhood. When you cut your bangs off? No. <laughs> Oh, hold on, do you tell me. No, 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 hold on. This that was right before school pictures. Is whenever mom decided, she was, mom was a, a hairdresser, not a barber. Mm-hmm. But she got some clippers and she was decided she was going to do a flat top. And I, I could never do a flat top. Well, that was quite apparent from my experience. You didn't have the right kind of hair fart anyway. <laughs> no. So this is my flat top experience. I know people are listening to this, but imagine the top of my head is not round. So it was flat with a little bald spot right there on the knot. <laughs> I don't remember that. I do. I, that's when I started wearing hats and haven't quit since. Why do you think I experimented my own children first before I tried it oh, on a paying boy. customer? I always say you get what you pay for. Did you pay me for that? I have never paid for a haircut okay. in my life, so I'll give you credit for that. I'll give you credit on that. There you go. Have you ever apologized to Jenna for... She actually <laughs> for does that? quite a bit. For that? For and yeah, I tell him it's all hers now, not mine. <laughs> Same thing I tell Deanna, because she does his books. It's like, it's all yours now, not mine. Jenna still gets really mad at me. She's like, I can't believe your mother raised you like that. Your mother didn't raise you like that. I'm like, yeah, blame it on her. I like where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not my fault, Jenna. It's my upbringing. You're right. Go, go get her. Attack. <laughs> Michael Joseph. <laughs> We're never going to make it to the present day. We're, we're working on it. So anyways, I, I bring Jenna around, and you're not a big fan of her in the beginning. I don't know why you say that. I'm trying to stir shit. I know it's I was going to say, I, I liked Jenna from the get-go. <laughs> you sure? Michael, what? you are trying to stir shit, but uh, I like Jenna, and she knows it, and you know it. I know. Well, well, this is why I'm mad about this. I'm pretty sure she likes her better than me. Most of the time, I do. Like but most people do. If she could yeah. choose which one was her blood relative, it'd be her over me. No, Jenna's just nicer to me most of the time. So, I am going to go down this road, and uh, you're not going to like it, but you're going to go down it with me. We'll see. I can always have Jason click me off. No, that's not an option. Keep it's, that, it's much easier to keep that thing off. around. So <laughs> whenever I first started dating Jenna, um, it was, it was uh, I don't know if awkward's the word. You know where I'm going with this, don't you? I don't know. So before my mother married my dad, she was engaged briefly to another gentleman. Oh, God. Do we have to go back that far? So, 
which just so happens to be Jenna's uncle. I wasn't engaged. I said no. <laughs> <laughs> So, even though I didn't know Jenna and her family very well, my mother did. Yeah, I did. I ran around with Jenna's mom. We used to, yeah, I had a lot of memories there. So, uh, I don't know. It was just kind of, I wouldn't say it was weird, but whenever I first started building. It was weird for me. I know it was weird for her, too, because she didn't come around a whole lot. Well, I (laughs) had no clue. Yeah, anyway. Jenna's uncle, whenever I first started building this house, he was actually laid off. And, yeah, uh, and he was out And here. he was out here all the time. Like, he was a huge help in getting this house built. He helped me lay block. He helped me pour concrete. He did a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mom just kind of kept her distance a little bit. But nowadays, it's... Oh, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it was it's, it was just that I hadn't seen him in years. And just right. kind of weird that he's with my and son. <laughs> my, my grandparents, her parents, made it very clear growing up that they did not like this guy. <laughs> I don't think that's a big secret, is it? No. No. So my perception of Dale, I'm going to say his name, my perception of Dale is, is he's this crazy, wild-ass monster, you know? Right. I've only heard stories over the years of bits and pieces, so then I meet Dale, and I'm like, well, hell, he's a lot of, he's a lot of good help, you know? <laughs> he, it was just that I had, uh, yeah, I just wasn't allowed to do a lot of the things that he did. Of course, I like to be a little rebellious, and my mom said, you better never go out with him again. And so she did. I yeah. came home with his ring that first night, you know, it's just kind of like, <laughs> take that. <laughs> so I have anyway, no where I get it from. Uh, yeah. yeah. So my point of this whole conversation is, is I never did anything like that. No, no. You were a good kid on that area, in that area. Uh, I didn't yes. have to worry about that. That was, that was nice. You know, after this, am I still welcome at the market? Yes. Okay. As long as you, yes, yes. All right. So, we'll so kinda, far, I'm innocent. So far, I'm a victim. I swear. We'll, we'll wrap the very end of this all up into one little, one little ball here. But I think you would agree that my goal, my whole entire life, was to probably be self-employed and independent. Yeah. I mean, that was never a really. Well, a I think you you worked for a couple of people, but you also realized it's much nicer to be your own boss and be in control. We're kind of, we're kind of control freaks, I think. Are we control freaks, or are we just goal driven, and we know what we want and we go for it? Well, probably both a little bit. There's something to say if you make your own mistakes, it's your, it's on you. Right, right. You know, you can't blame it on somebody else. The only thing I would say I'm a control freak about is controlling my own destiny and my quality of life. Right. Like, if I was. Like, I have no issue, like, delegating stuff out and, and pushing responsibility off on people and stuff like that. I don't have to have, I don't micromanage. But at the end of the day, I like to have the control of the direction of my ship sailing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, until the store, I've only, only worked for myself. I never had to worry about anybody else or well, bossing I mean, you, any other people, you, own, you know. You own the store, so I mean. I know, but this is the yourself. first time I've ever had to delegate jobs, right. and right. that was Whenever harder. Whenever you were self-employed, you were a one-person show. That's it, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't have to answer to anybody. If I wanted to take off, I just marked out that so day. So whenever I uh, made the leap, and I've never asked mom this, so I really don't know the question or the answer. So whenever I made the leap to uh, become self-employed, were, were you worried I was going to fail? Or Oh, no. No. You were young enough to fail and make it again. <laughs> if that was the case. I mean... Was it like you were still? So she wasn't. Cons- she wasn't worried I wasn't going to fail. She just figured if I failed, I had time to fail again. I, well, no. I mean, she had faith that you would right. figure it out. Right. Exactly. If that wasn't the path, then you're going to find another. Because you're not on the same path you were then. No. Uh, yes and no. I mean. Well, you were more into the construction, and now you're more yeah, into the dirt work. But so. I'm still in business for myself. Correct. But you're you're probably doing more your passion now than that was your passion. Yes. Yeah, you know, and definitely. I think that's the best part is that you, you are doing something you love. Not everybody can do that. Definitely went down that road. So unfortunately, and I, and I don't want to get into this, Mom, we can maybe hit on this at another time. But unfortunately, after I graduated high school and college, uh, Dad got killed in an accident. Mm-hmm. The and, world uh, changed. Yeah, a lot of things changed uh, really quickly around that time. Because it, for me, you know, uh, Dad got killed. I had just started a new job. I was... Uh, I hadn't I hadn't met Jenny yet, but I was I was in the process of clearing this property and 
um, mm -hmm. or shortly after that, I was in the process of clearing this property and, and moving out and, and all that stuff. But uh, um, so we're going to skip over that section of it. But fast forward to like let's let's fast forward to today now where we're at. So we talked about growing up in Troy on Grandma's property. Mm -hmm. um, was it 10, 12 years after Dad got killed? You, I guess it was longer than that. You, you eventually end up selling the house we grew up in. Um, yeah, it was probably probably more like 12. 12 years, uh, which that was a big step for you. Oh, huge step. Um, uh, and, huge step. Um, circle all the back all the way back around you moved to nashville for a while uh, you did remarry uh barry which mm -hmm. we like and respect um we remarried barry he had an opportunity in nashville but i'm, I'm fast forward and farther to you ended up back here in derby where we we're at uh, which was our goal even when right, we lived right. in troy yeah, we had this left, property whenever you left troy right. the ultimate goal was to get to derby right. now I, we've talked i have two siblings uh, my youngest brother lives, I actually built a house on the family farm. I got five acres from the family farm, built a house here. My youngest brother did the same. He lives right next door to me, mm -hmm. uh, five acres here on the family farm. And then my middle brother lives about 40 minutes from here. Mm -hmm. But um, So it made sense for you and Barry to move to Derby to be close to the well, maximum number of grandkids. You know, that's where I always wanted to be. That's where you and your, my, you know, Frank were going to move. This yeah. is, mm -hmm. that yeah, was... Because uh, so I've always wanted to be in Derby and just finally got here. <laughs> just took a long route. So the question I get, the question I get asked a lot, and it's hard to explain, is um, what um, the property, like, do I, I get asked all the time, do I own the Derby market? No. And the, the answer is technically no. So whenever the Derby market... Technically mar no? Well, whenever the Derby market first... <laughs> Well, no, we're going to explain this because people always have this question. So whenever the Derby market first come to be, I actually owned that property with my business partner, Josh, which we did a podcast with Josh. Mm -hmm. And Josh and I built the building. Correct. And then you and Barry signed a, <coughs> signed a, a lease, lease right. to run the building. So I guess technically I own the building and you own the business, you and Barry. Right. Um, now, since then, things have changed a little bit. Uh, Josh asked to be bought out, and basically Mom and Barry, in simple terms, bought Josh out of that mm -hmm. lease. So, so now we own the property, too. Yeah, so me, Mom, and Barry, or Barry, Mom, and I. And Jenna. Oh, yeah, and Jenna. Uh, we own the property together. Um, so it's a whole different separate business, LLC, but you guys own, we own the property together. You guys own and operate the business solely on your own. Correct. So, yeah, I have extended family interest in the business, but I don't, I don't I have nothing to do with day-to-day -day operations. I have nothing to do with... I don't think you and I could work together somewhere. No, we couldn't. There's, <laughs> there's no way. There's that controlling part would come into play. There's, uh, Barry has a hard time working with me now. <laughs> there, we're too much alike. Yes, we are. We're just... It's... Uh, I don't know. We're we're both hard headed. We're both stubborn. We both got our ways. And, well, and you just think it should go be, your way, and I think it should go mine. I can be dead ass wrong, and I know I'm dead ass wrong, but it's the principle of winning the argument. <laughs> and I will argue for weeks until she finally gives in. Then I'm like, all right, we'll do it your way. <laughs> you know, <it's> just... <laughs> You've given up your secret. Huh? Oh, she's. Oh, I've known that yeah. for a long time. But she still plays the game. Maybe I'm playing the game. Oh, you're not that good. Hmm. Okay. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to close on one last note. Then we're we're going to close on this note. We rolled in on an hour here, Jason. Yeah. So uh, recently, about two and a half years ago, I had this um, crazy idea. I was going to start a YouTube channel. Yeah. And I don't even. Yeah. So what was like, Just tell me what was your initial thoughts or reactions to that? Be honest. I, I didn't really have any because I really didn't know much about it. I still don't know much about it. No offense. It's but probably a good thing. I don't watch a lot of them because I don't really care about dirt work. That's, I don't watch it either. So. Okay. <laughs> she says that. But I see her pop up on live feeds. I do <laughs> just because I want to be support. I, I want to be supportive. So I'll just pop in there and just say, hey, I don't say anything. I just say hi. So you got to get a shameless plug, plug in for the Derby market here. Obviously, YouTube's been somewhat successful for me. 
and the derby market's kind of become, uh, I'm obviously <laughs> synonymous with it, you know what yeah, I mean? The dirt perfect secondary world headquarters. <laughs> well, he does, he is one of our better customers, I have to say. Oh, yeah. So if anybody's ever in the derby area, uh, the chances of seeing me are probably not that great, but you guys do cover, you actually you carry stuff from us and longer way down there at the store. Yeah, we do have a few items though down so, there. So, uh, yeah, swing, swing through the derby area and check out the derby market. It's easy to find right off Highway 70. And, uh, yeah, see all the cool memorabilia they got. They got, you don't stock a whole lot, but you stock some. And uh, you guys, if I'm, if I'm around. I kind of know how to get more if I need it. Yeah. yeah. And if, if you guys know I'm around call and John. working and somebody stops by, you call me. And, and I will swing by if I can, but I'm not going to make that promise. Cause I, no, when we have done that, if somebody comes in, you uh, know. Yeah. Because um, I think it's kind of neat mm -hmm. that they've searched out Derby, searched out you, yeah, searched we, out the Derby market. Quite a few people that have come through which is which is flattering i guess to mm -hmm. to say the least so but uh but yeah so yeah and if, if somebody's just out for a sunday drive or, or passing through this area and, and wants to check it out they do well, you guys sell hats and t-shirts and we've got yeah i think from you and from longer way yeah i'm pretty sure and really good food yeah <laughs> yeah awesome food and awesome gourmet ice cream yeah, yeah. and uh, hopefully soon some outdoor seating yeah I've been checking out picnics tables already. Picnic, picnic Pic table. I was trying to think <laughs> with umbrellas, but it's the picnic tables with umbrellas. <laughs> Got to have both so you can have the shade. Right. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap this up. I appreciate you taking it easy on me. Yeah. It See, went this better. Wasn't, this wasn't well, as Well, you wouldn't you tell me what it was all about, so I had no clue what to do. You couldn't prepare. I could not prepare. I didn't, I didn't have any thing to go off I mean, of oh, just, to, to, just to put it all just to put it all in a <laughs> nutshell i was the best kid ever you're lucky to have me as a son and i love you too that's it that's pretty much it okay but i'm not saying all that <laughs> trust me you know so trust me mother your other kids will never listen to this oh uh, it doesn't matter if they listen to it or not michael i'm not going to say that because i love all of my children i never said you didn't love all of them equally <laughs> You're, you're trying to get grandma to always say that and me to always say well, that, you know? It's very successful with grandma. She well, <laughs> that's because she's, you're the favorite as long as you're in her face. And then the next, it can change pretty quick. Oh, no, no. I've got grandma. Grandma's, I'm grandma's favorite. There's, there's no. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I, think, I think Aaron is grandma's favorite from what I heard. Aaron, Aaron, can, Aaron claims to be everybody's favorite. Yeah. Well, he can be everybody's favorite. He's, a, he's always, he'll do more when I ask him to do things than yeah. you will. That's because he's a suck ass and I ain't. It's point it's, blank. I think he's just, too. is he? <laughs> I, I tell him all the time, I said, you do all the honey do lists and I'll read the benefits. You just keep going. <laughs> no, he's a sweetie. I like Aaron. Uh, all right, well, maybe we'll get, uh, maybe we'll get Barry on another podcast soon. Yeah. Um, Barry is my stepdad here. Husband, husband yeah. what it would be called. I was going to say new husband, but that wouldn't, that didn't sound right. So. <laughs> He's not so new. We've been together about 12 years now. There's that D in English. <laughs> but, but yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I mean, me and Barry have had some random conversations about this, but I'm sure there's, uh, uh, we got a crazy family and I'd like to know his, his thoughts on some of it. Cause he's <laughs> like, he's a, like Barry, um, I, I'm prepping for another podcast here, but, uh, if there's like the polar opposite of dad, it's Barry. True. I mean, like they can't get any farther apart. <laughs> yeah, there you're you're right on that. So I don't know if I want Barry to be on here then. Oh yeah, that's a guarantee. He's coming on right there. Yeah. That comment. Right no, there. Um, I I I can control that still. So you know? I, I know I know for a fact that Barry sees some of the stuff that goes on in our family, and he just it blows. I don't know if it blows his mind, but he just like really this is really going down right now. <laughs> So. He just sits back and takes it all in. He sits back and enjoys the entertainment because he knows what's getting ready to happen. And it's funny because Barry knows my tactics and I get mom all riled up and Barry's over like, Paula, just let it go. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got it where I want it. We're going to town now. Uh, all right, uh, we're done. <laughs> All right, mother. <clears throat> thanks for uh, thanks for being on with us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> thanks for time. asking. Yeah, and uh, we need to remind everybody we are all now on all the major 
streaming yeah, yeah. yeah we're everywhere still on uh, youtube at a few points from perfect yep and uh leave yeah. comments use an email i think it's to- i think it's time to go find barry <laughs> <laughs> all right bye <laughs>